I want to tell you my step one in creating deep explainer videos. Wait, why should you listen to me? Well, hi, I'm Mahesh. I have made hundreds of videos at Khan Academy. Now, these videos don't really have a lot of fancy animation, at least not most of them do, but they are conceptually rich and deep. And I think that's one of the reasons why our learners absolutely love them. These videos get about half a million views every month. Now, every single creator has their own style of creating these deep content but I want to tell you what my style is. So I have a three-step process in creating my videos. My first step is clearly laying out what the outcome of that video is going to be, and this is the one that we're going to deep dive in this video. My step two would be then deciding a storyline that is in service to the outcome, and then my step three is deciding the visuals that's in service to the storyline. Now here's the most important thing. When I'm doing one, I don't want to think about the others, and therefore, when I'm thinking about the outcomes, I don't think about the storyline or the visuals. And this is important because I don't want my outcomes to be biased by my teaching style. My outcome should be affected or dependent on the broader course objectives as it should be, right? So then when I think about the storyline, I try and make sure that it's in service to the outcomes. And again, I'm trying to think I'm trying not to think about the visuals right now for the same reason. I don't want my ability to draw something or create something to affect the way in which I want to tell the, the story, right? So there could be an amazing animation I want to show, but if it's not in service to the story, it doesn't make sense. So once the storyline is decided, then finally I go towards thinking about what the visuals need to be. Again, it's in service to the storyline. So with this rigorous backward design process, there's a good chance that the video that eventually gets produced has the intended impact, all right? So now let's deep dive into the first step. And in the future videos, if you like it, we're gonna deep dive into step two and step three as well. All right, so let's think about how I write down my outcomes. I have a rigorous process here as well, okay? So I write down my outcomes in four buckets. I mean, I use four buckets over here. First, the summary of the video, I start with that, okay? Then what are some confusions and misconceptions in this particular topic? What are the prerequisites? And what are some new words used over here? Let's go through each one of them one by one. So summary, what do I want my learners to summarize after watching this video? This might feel a little weird because this is the first step, again, backward design. The first thing I do is I imagine that a learner has gone through the video multiple times if necessary, and then I ask that learner, hey, what's your summary? What would I want that learner to summarize, right? I want to be happy with it. That's what I summarize over here. I actually write down the bullet points of what I want to hear from my learner. That then becomes like the not guiding star for the rest of my video creation process. Um, now, a couple of advantages. One advantage over here is that once I lay out the summary, this will be the summary of my video as well. The second thing when I keep it very important for me is I try to summarize the thinking process, not just the facts. And this is important, at least in science, because you know, it's, I, I want to inculcate, uh, I want to show how experts think. All right, that's important for noise. And I'm sure this is true for every field, whatever branch you want to teach, whatever genre you want to teach, you want to make sure that you, you convey or you, you, you help the beginners understand the thinking process that the, the experts are having. And that's why how they can learn. The next step is going to and writing down what the confusion and misconceptions are. Because again, this makes my future self mindful to include that in their story. It has happened so many times. You have not done this before I joined Khan Academy where I was all over the place where I would produce a video and then at the end of the video, I realized, oh my God, there is this common misconception that I have completely forgot. So I want to make sure that that does not ever happen. I want to hit misconceptions hard. So I write down what the mis misconceptions are and it again, it helps me. The way it helps me is in my storyline, I will always start with that misunderstanding. You know, mis misconceptions don't drive, they don't go away just by telling what the right answer is. You have to first start with that misunderstanding and then show why it is wrong and then arrive at the right thing. The third is lying down, okay, what should the learner already know by now? Prerequisites. This helps me in two ways. This helps my future self in two ways. One, I'll be more mindful that I don't have to explain everything. There are some prerequisites that you need to know when you come down over here. So this makes sure that I don't, my video doesn't blow up trying to explain everything. The second thing is, just because it's a prerequisite doesn't necessarily mean that you already know it, a learner does already knows it, so I will be mindful of providing a quick recap, OK? 
Okay. And then I'll redirect them to our previous videos for more clarity. Here are a couple of examples of, of where I've done this before. And again, this is a quick and dirty derivation, but if you want a full-fledged derivation with all the nuances, feel free to go back and watch our previous videos on Gauss Law. And if you're confused about this, we've talked a lot about that in our previous videos in great detail. You can feel free to go back and check that out. So when the learner comes in, they hear the recap, hmm, it doesn't make sense to me, they can pause the video, go back and watch whatever they're supposed to, and then come back over here. And finally, new words. What relatively new words are introduced? This relatively word is very, important for me. So there could be certain new words that are introduced a couple of videos before this particular video. I would still consider them to be relatively new. A v words that learners have not internalized, so they haven't been using it for quite some time, are new words for me. And I, do, I try to do two things. I try to make this list as small as possible, so come up with explanations that don't have a lot of new words, and that's not always possible, and we'll take an example, and you'll see that in the example that we're gonna take, there are a lot of new words, but anyways. Try to reduce the uh, list as much as possible. And the second thing I try to do is, now, again, my future self will be more mindful of elaborating on them. I'm not just gonna throw these words. I'll probably give you a recap of what that word means, or if it's a really, really a new word, I will be mindful of introducing it slowly and talking more about it, so it doesn't feel like I'm just throwing jargons at you. And that's it. Now I wanna go to the example of human ear, which I made, which has about a million views, and its Hindi version has actually about five and a half million views. So I went back and I looked at what I had written down for it. So here's the summary that I wrote down, and if it doesn't make sense, it's fine. The idea is to see how I write down my summary. So here it is. Just pause and just read it out. All right, so you see, this is exactly the summary I want my learner to have after they come out of this video. That's what I thought. After they come out of this video of how a human ear works, how, how does human ear hear sound, right? Now third point, for example, is super important. Um, I'm also, I am also also want them to be able to summarize how does our middle ear amplify sound. I want that to be a part of the summary because again, this is the thinking process that I was talking about. Um, similarly, the last part, right, the last point, I want them to know, I want them to be able to summarize that the electrical signals that the brain gets is sensitive to loudness and pitch and that's how we can, humans can differentiate different sounds. So whatever I feel, I, the creator, feel that, you know, that needs to be taken away from this video, needs to be part of your summary, I'm gonna include that, right? And different creators might differ on that, but that's okay. The idea is you have to lay out what your summary is going to be, and this is also pretty much was my summary of the video as well. What are the confusions? Okay, there was no misconceptions. I, I think as of now, I, when I come back to it, I think there could be some misconceptions, but, but I hadn't written down anything, so there was nothing. Prerequisites, I wrote down that sound is a transfer of vibrations of air molecules, right? You need to know what sound is in order to understand what human ear is. So I was mindful of actually making an animation, quickly revisiting what sound really was, right? I can go back and check that out. And what are some new words? Well, this video was loaded with new words. It was like all the new words that you learn about the ear and all of that. So every single word I was being mindful of, like introduce it slowly, maybe elaborate a little bit on that and not make it seem like I'm just throwing these words at you if you've known it for millions of years. So once I have filled all of these out, I have rigorously scoped the what part of my video, and now I can move on to step two where I think about the storyline without thinking deeply about the visuals. Anyways, if you wanna hear about my step two and th step three, let me know in the comments, and if it has worked out, you'll probably see step two, step three videos somewhere over here.